Hey everyone, how's it going? Oxbus here and welcome back to Ever Crisis. We're going to be talking about Kate Sith and Tifa's new banner. There's a couple things I want to go over before you decide to pull for these characters or skip them. Uh, some major things that people have been talking about in my stream that I just finished. One is when you're doing the limit break thing, go to the battle tower and do the limit break on floor 35, 34, 33, which increases how fast your limit break charges. Don't do the event. I know people are using the event because it guarantees a limit break charge, but wasting 10 tickets down there when you're doing the highest of the battle score, it'll give you way more eggs. If you end up spending 10 tickets down below, you're gonna end up losing a lot of the stuff out of the event shop because you don't have enough resources to buy everything. So don't do that through limit breaks. Besides that, let's jump in, talk about Tifa and Kate Sith. Really, really, really interesting situation with Kate Sith and his whole crit build. He can be one of the strongest physical non-elemental characters in the game but he also can just be one of your average, nothing too new or meta breaking. He does come with haste, which has a 20% chance. So he is in an interesting place. I'm going to talk about him after because Tifa is really easy to go over right now. Um, it's Tifa. What are you doing? Just pull. Look, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. It's the Alice in Wonderland bunny. It's got the clock. It's got the little tail. It's got the bunny ears. All right. This looks fantastic overall. A lot of people love Tifa. Uh, most of your Tifas are physical build, not magical build, and water is in a weird place when it comes to magic. But what the gloves do, it is boost magic, our ability, and water at 26, right? Giving you 850% magic water damage, which is great potency, and it has magic attack is increased every time you cast, it adds one tier of the buff. It is only from low to high, but that is fantastic because you're going to be spamming this ability for damage anyways. So anything that comes with it, is just gravy. So the fact that you're doing max arcanum damage and buffing yourself means she needs nothing else on a second hand. This is better than Emerin Claws, uh, better than any character that has to carry a second weapon to buff themselves. One weapon does it all. Her second weapon, whatever you need to be. Debuffing the enemy, right? Because she's got a lot of that for their attack, for the defense. She's fantastic. This weapon is incredible. Comes with the X Sigil on top of it with 674 magic attack really good just the way to build her is a little awkward uh there's other ways but the way i feel most efficient i'll show you on the wish list she comes with water arcanum 35 percent increase for water ability damage and free boost numbers which is really good boost magic ability potency plus 10. so how do we build her what's her wish list this is her wish list uh you're gonna be using Kasif's new weapon here her healing gloves because it has water potency sun umbrella noble color from red 13 and lucia serpent eater lucia's lucia's here is a full lookout for her i have marked up here i got nothing here i'm not gonna show you the stats and go like look at me because i don't have her weapons for this but you're gonna run in the main hand the new weapon let's just say the striker gloves are the new weapon Right? In the second hand, you're going to be using these healing weapons because of the water potency. It's 52. So we're going to take half of that, 26. Her new weapon has 26. We're at 52 water potency. And then we're going to come in the back here and we're going to get the rest of the water potency off a of noble collar because that's all we need. Another 19. So with our 52 and 19, we're going to be hitting 100% water ability damage, which is fantastic. The rest of that going to 120 is not necessary because we're going to take the rest of those points and put them into magic attack stance to go along with her costume, which is this right here. So running a max dose sun umbrella at 39 points, along with Kate Sif's crystal megaphone for another 39, half and half, 39, right? Plus her costume is 49 putting us at 70% increase instead of a 20% towards the water potency. The magic ability damage still is a really good increase overall, and these two weapons will give us a boost attack that the front doesn't, because the front's going to have magic attack with water potency, heal water potency, so we're missing that boost. We are going to max out magic attack because of Sun Umbrella, but we're going to miss a little bit of points in boost attack. We're only going to have 46 which is 20%, so we're losing 5%, but it's not that big of a deal when overall she gives herself high attack, right? We lose a little bit of water potency if we end up switching for utility, but when we need to survive for HP, uh, for decreasing the enemy's attack, whatever you need, it's worth it to lower your attack by a big chunk just to make sure you survive attacks. Sometimes that is just worth it. Uh, and you are going to use whatever limit break you want. There is no water summon. Summersault is one of her best ones. Her new one's really good too. 
but overall this is what you guys are pulling for and that's why you're maxing out magic attack second best boost attack 70 percent on magic ability uh attack stance and then you're getting water potency all the way up to 100 extra so tifa build very straightforward let's go for the kate sith one now now kate sith is uh <laughs> that's not whoa tifa again <laughs> K Sith is in a is in a weird place. He looks great. This looks so good, by the way. He looks so good. I like K Sith as a character. He's always been the RNG buffer, debuffer, critical luck mechanism uh, mechanics, and they did that in this game. So going off his costume, he increases buff duration slash debuff ten points. So this is really good because what the build I have plus his other weapons, it comes into play very well. And then he's got an Arcanum. For crit damage so this is going to be the best crit damage increase we'll see in a costume because arcanum is the best elemental one there's mastery then there's the 15 15 percent one like lucia's and red 13s but arcanum is usually the best we'll see of a potency so 50 percent increase in crit damage meaning that he's got a really good crit build the weapon he comes for uh for on this banner isn't the greatest it's a great weapon but if you're here for haste it's not it all right, so the way this weapon works is that fully maxed out, it doesn't have a huge amount of stats. It's missing 100 and something, so it's not a stat stick. It is an R ability stick, and a lot of his weapons are R ability sticks. This is a 6239, really good for any other character in the game. This thing is fantastic to put on someone's back weapons, right? But what it does is increases magic attack, high potency, anyone you choose. It applies a heal, and it adds regen. It's really good. And there's another R ability weapon he has that increases his healing by 62. So really, really good overall. But there's a 20% chance to apply haste. For 4 ATB and keep applying to one character, magic attack, magic attack, little bitty heal, regen refresh, just to get that 20%. You're wasting so much time and ATB that you're not healing. You're not applying debuffs, and you're already applying a magic attack that's there anyways, and Tifa takes care of herself, as you saw. As long as she's attacking for 850% potency, she'll have high magic attack anyways, making this unnecessary. Other characters, different story, but chasing that 20%, even for dungeon rankings or anything else, having another character doing damage or healer healing is way more important than that 20% chance after every 4 ATB. The duration, though, at a normal one copy is still 20%. It's only 10 seconds, but with the buff duration, you can get this up to 30 seconds and nothing else. It's just in a weird place, and unless you really need it, it's not a must-have, and it's not a game-changer for all the content. There's going to be a niche moment where it's important, but not necessary. So the key thing I would take away from here is the costume. Very, very good. Weapon you can wishlist later. You don't have to overboost that. I spend a lot. And the way his wishlist works, I have it on in Photoshop right now. This is what you're going to be aiming for, his yellow megaphone, which you get two free copies just from logging in. Enemy launcher from Barrett, his uh, battle trumpet, I believe it's called, or marching one, we'll go talk about it when we're in a game. Uh, the black rifle from Lucia and Matt's killer hornet. And the reason being is because he is actually a very good crit damage build. That's going to look like this. So you're going to wear his new costume. Uh, Limit Break is going to be the Moogle Dance, or the one that lowers the enemy's physical defense and magic defense. Kate Sith, biggest play is that his Limit Breaks are only 800 speed. Let me go show you that real quick, right? His Limit Breaks are very, very good. Uh, dice ones for RNG damage, but Toy Box lowers defense and magic defense physical for 800 speed, where on average Limit Breaks are 1800. So like Tifa Somersault, it's that fast or you buff the party physical and magic AOE while casting a small amount of heal. So he's really good in that sense, just like Red 13 has his moments on the harder content. He's gonna be there for very niche hard content and can be used for everything else because he does have good damage while applying that limit break and this trumpet. The battle trumpet is a Kuja blade from the Final Fantasy IX collaboration. We haven't got another AOE double one in a while it lowers magic attack and physical attack of the enemy when it crits, when hitting critical, physical attack is also decreased. So magic attack is always mid, physical is going to be a high to all the enemies, and its R abilities are fantastic, giving physical and ability potency. So that plus his limit break, plus his buff duration from his costume, he's going to buff your party for longer, he's going to debuff the enemy for longer, 
and his front row ends up giving him enough boost attack and physical attack that his back weapons just work nicely. So with this build, Killer Hornet here is for the physical attack plus attack stance for physical. So we're going to get 70% with this build. 45 points coming from Killer Hornet and coming from Enemy Launcher. Boost attack off of Enemy Launcher plus the boost attack of his new main weapon, which is the Yellow Megaphone, which is at 46, will be max boost attack. And then with the Killer Hornet plus his Battle Trumpet, right? And then the last one is Black Rifle, giving him maxed out boost attack 55 points and adding... 15 well 19 technically but level 3 so he's gonna get crit damage plus 40 percent plus crit damage 50 percent from his costume increasing crit damage by 90 percent with the way his yellow megaphone works this is the true weapon of this game it is 700 percent physical non-elemental with a 30 percent chance not a 10 percent this is the only character in the game that has an increase in crit chance it's 30 percent and if it does crit it does times three damage so take that 700%, apply the boost from here, which we're getting 40% plus the 70 from the other. This goes towards physical ability damage. So we're getting an extra 110. So 700 plus 110 is 810%. And then you times that by three, you're doing crazy damage, right? And then plus his costume and the black rifle, another 90% on top of that for crit damage, right? Just picture this. You're going to, on average, do 25,000 crit damage and it, sorry, normal damage. If it doesn't crit, you're going to do like 25,000. And then when it does crit, it's going to times it by three. He's going to do 75,000 damage. He is one of the strongest physical non-elemental characters in the game. Whatever damage you do when you crit, you're just going to multiply that by three. Right? Sigils or whatever, no sigils on here makes it a little bit weak. This doesn't include uh, healing or sorry, raising your HP, there's no survivabilities. There is weapons you could put for survivability. Whatever you have that's a mix of HP and like Buster Sword can come in here for the boost attack. There is uh, crit weapons with HP on them. So whatever you want to add for HP. Another couple things you can put here with this build. I'm going to do it in the banner because it makes more sense by just looking at it. So the way that Kate Sith works is that a magic build works, but all his weapons are aoe magic so this would buff magic for himself or another character then he has some aoe magic with water resistance down on his green megaphone but his whole entire kit relies on him critting his other weapons have a 20 percent chance to crit not a 10 percent and if they do crit they add the ability to lower the enemy's defense magic attacks so on and so on but the way you break this up is you look at this weapon it goes with these three weapons right if you're using the crit build your main source is this plus that battle trumpet in other situations where he's not using his moogle dance and no one else can buff him you can bring in marching horn which will increase his physical attack on high and it'll apply the regen while also casting a small amount of heal and it's got buff duration and all that so this does work out it can be part of the build it is a physical increase as well 592 so that works if you need the situation where you want to switch that one for having magic attack down if he crits 20 percent chance to apply magic attack down not really worth it it's an option and it also adds that physical attack that we need to finish the build off but realistically you're going to be running these two or these two majority of the time another option is if you rely on that 20 percent you could increase physical def or decrease the enemy's physical defense and if you crit it does it to high if not it's always low but the playback here is that we have survivability we get some boost hp but again, niche moments, if you need the HP and lowering some physical defense, that can work. Everything else on his kit is really whatever. Again, this is the majority of what you're looking at. Magic builds are AoE. He does have some resist down on elements, plus doing things, but it's all RNG based. Not worth it going out of your way. He's not meta changing. The haste is not um, reliable enough to waste 4 ATB every turn to wait till a cast, even for dungeon rankings. You're most likely just going to blow up the enemy with summons, triple summons. You can manipulate your ATB gauge with others, right? Or the last mob you fight, you can save ATB during dungeon ranking. So overall, he's a cool character, very strong crit build while decreasing the enemy's magic attack, physical attack, Mughal dancing, buffing the entire party at a very fast pace. 800 speed for limit breaks is great. 
So he is a good character, but just like this banner with Lucia and Aerith, Tifa and Kate Sith is outshined by these two limit break banners. But these are limited, so the weapons are limited, but the weapons, if you do pull one copy, they work really well, then you can weapon parts down the line. These you can wishlist forever until you have OB-10. All four banners, costumes are one and done. Nothing has been reprinted, they don't come back. So if you want Fire Kingdom Zack, you want Ice Cloud, Water Glen, if you want Fire Aerith, right, the Lucia, or the Crit Build Kate Sith, or Water Tifa, that's what you're pulling for. You're pulling for the costume. Weapons are whenever, when Limit Break banners come back, they'll be in the wish list as well, only during Limit Break weapons. It's the costumes. Pull for your husband, husbandos, pull for your waifus. But that's how you build Kate Sith, and that's how you build Tifa for my first video of polar skipping just to help you with an ideal wish list i believe those two are probably their strongest builds give or take on depending on what you guys have you can add other things you can switch it around you can put that attack stance to complement tifa more than just adding a little bit more water potency there's small things you can change around but this is a generally good idea and again case Sith works he just has to work with that crit build and mixing anything else with that yellow megaphone doesn't really benefit him that much. He just looks good. And it comes with two free ones anyway. So you get Obi-Wan off the bat. So that's the general idea. Hopefully something here helped you guys. If you did enjoy the video and you have a build and you want to add it or just be part of the community, there's a link down below for Discord, Twitch channel. Leave a comment talking about what you think Kate Sith should look like. If you're pulling for any of these characters and if you are, good luck. I hope you guys get what you want. Besides that, thank you so much for watching. Keep on smiling, and I'll smell you later.